Hello and welcome to Xinhua Live. This is Bai Yu from Xinhua News Agency. The 2025 robotics skill competition is held in South China's high-tech hub of Shenzhen, showcasing the cutting-edge robotics products and uh, technologies. So how this industry has moved from single-point breakthroughs to clustered transformation? Let's go and take a look. Artificial intelligence is not only reshaping the industries but also redefining the boundaries of art. Right now, on the stage of the 2025 Robotics Skill Competition, the Humanoid Robot Art Performance Contest is underway. Gone are the code assembly lines. Here, intelligent manufacturing and uh, creativity dance together. With the theme Smart Creation for the Future, Technology Leading the Globe, the 2025 Robotics Skill Competition is held in Shenzhen, Guangdong Province. Over 100 top-tier teams have gathered here for an intensive showdown of cutting-edge technology. The event covers enterprises, universities, and research institutes and its contests span industrial manufacturing, medical and healthcare, emergency rescue, and other real-world scenarios, as well as challenges in robotic technology innovation. So how are the robots changing our daily life? Let's welcome Professor Wu Zhizheng the judge of this competition. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm from the COEK Shenzhen. Uh, I'm the director of the artificial intelligence and the robotics. I'm also the founder of the Anfin Tech. Uh, I was a judge uh, of the competition, so I see a lot of improvement, big throughs from the robotics. Uh, VRE model is the core of this uh, success. VRE means vision, language, and action. Vision is to, for the robot to see clearly, language for robot to understand. Action is for the robot to do some actual work to perform. So uh, that's why uh, we, the robot can do a lot of things. Google demand uh, makes uh, this breakthrough to VRE model in 2023. It's still only two years ago. So there are some breakthroughs recently. First is a fast, slow, uh, dual system architecture. Mm -hmm. Fast means for the robot to think fast. Slow means the robot can plan ahead for this task. Mm -hmm. The second is the synthetic data. You know, for human, we only have 24 hours a day. Oh. To collect the data of the robot, it takes a long time. We have to do 24 hours. So the synthetic data means we can collect the data in the simulator world or the virtual world for the model to train. Mm -hmm. The third is a generalization across a robot. Previously, we have to train one type of uh, robot individually, right? So now we can train on one type of robot, uh, but generalize to other type of the robot. Mm -hmm. The third is, the last one is a multi-robot collaboration. Multi a robot now can work together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, what do you think? The what is the most significant technical breakthrough in oh. robot recently? That is, I oh, think you have just mentioned a lot. So, what new application scenarios do you think has the robotics open up? You know, now the robotic can think, can act. I believe in maybe a, a, in a few years, robotic will be in our daily life. For example, clean up the kitchen cooking for us, do some uh, housekeeping work uh, for us. I believe we will see them a lot in our real world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And uh, in, in your view, what should be the next urgent R&D priority in this field? Okay, uh, first thing I think is the data, the high quality data, especially for many researchers, they focus more on models, mm -hmm. but I believe high quality data is a more urgent we need to do in the next step. Okay. Second is the same to real gap. You know, we use insect data to train the model, but there are some gap between the virtual world and the real world. 
how to close the same two real gap is the next thing we need to do as well. The next one is the embodiment gap. You know, for the human, especially for the uh, for our hand, we have fingers. We have a lot of sensors in our human body, but for the ro robotic, we cannot have all these uh, sensors. The last one is the uh, reliability. You know, for the ChatGPT, uh, if we make a mistake, that's okay. We can ask them to do again. But for the robot, if we ask a robot to do it again, uh, it will take a lot of time. Okay. I think these are all these challenges we need to do, we need to uh, develop in the next few years. This competition is more than a contest. It's a mirror reflecting the solid steps by which China's AI plus robotics integration has moved from the lab to the production line, from concept to real-world application. And now we have the representative from Shanghai yes. Institute of Technology, Shao Wenjun. Oh. Yes, yes. Hi, Wenjun. Can you share with us your experience of participating in this competition? Yes, that's my honor. Uh, you know, my name is Shao Wenjun and I'm from Shanghai Institute of Technology. And during the during the few days ago competitions, uh, I must say I've learned a lot. And I, I've I've taken part in two competitions. And the first is the uh, industrial industrial robots scene. And uh, during the competition, yes, uh, we we have we've met some bugs. We have set incorrect values so that our our robot arms can can work directly uh, can work rightly uh, but luckily finally we have overcome that problem and i think that's a very valuable experience for me and for our team uh, i'm very proud to be here to take part in this robot competition and so when talk about our Industrial robots. Um, our, I, I must say that our technological achievements. Uh, we use the utility differentiation so that you know. In uh, traditionally, we have all the data data collection and the calculation of the, calc the calculation of error parameters. They are they are all offline. But after we, we use the in in facility differentiation, so that we can put all the all the calculation and uh, all the results is it must be out. Uh, we can we put uh, we can we ha we don't have to stop the robots when we miss when when we miss some small problems. So that I think that's a very good progress. And we have also part participated in another. Com competition that's human humanoid robots, and at first our strategy is to use put on the VR glasses to make the robot and the same as the person. Let me check some pictures for you. Okay. No, that's that's the fine that's the final that's the final we have made on the stage, mm -hmm. and the first we want to take out something like this. Mm -hmm. We. Yeah. Yes, and we do something, and the robot do the same thing. But there's there's some problems in it because uh, we when we do when we do a motion, it can't be trans transformed. To, uh, it can't be transmitted to the robot in time. Mm. Maybe it's two or three seconds late. So we finally we cancel this strategy, and we oh, sorry, thank you. And, so finally, we have canceled this strategy, and we have we have to use the program we have set advanced 
So that that's it. And that's what. And I think that that is all the all the pro process I've I've been in this in the two competitions. And 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 uh, now I have to say the what we have done in this research is right. Okay. Uh, so that in the I think that we have made some many breakthroughs in those robots in the robot scene race because you know uh, our research is to use the software to I think that you, uh, we are we are always writing the algorithms al algorithms and all the models and all, all of all of them is to I think that to digging out all the potentials of the hardware uh, you know, if we don't have some two uh, very, 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 very good hardware, we, maybe we cannot do something, do do a lot of things. But if we have good software, if even even if we ha we don't have very good hardware, we can still do some something we want. You, you know, just like uh, you know, some years ago, they still ha they still can make cars, make robots. They just use the simple station. But, and now we have motors, we have re releasers, and we have the code. We, have, we can put the AI into the robot, and, and it can be very, very advanced. Research teams are still showcasing their latest developments. At the competition sites, robots of every stripe showed off their talents, revealing a new trend in China. The robot industry and the AI are merging so deeply that machines are moving from showboating to clocking in. In the past, robots were often seen as star performers at tech expos. Today, they are rushing onto factory floors, into hospital wards, community nursing rooms, and even ordinary households. Take the home care robots as an example. They are designed for elderly people living alone. It offers health management, video monitoring, emergency calls, and remote consultations. Or the autonomous ultrasound scanner. They are just like a doctor's hand, eye, and brain coordination to deliver standardized exams. When we interviewed some contestants, many said the real value of AI is teaching robots to understand instructions, cope with open-ended environments, and finally become trustworthy productivity tools. The shift is from can move to can do the job well, and the contest it's no longer about single point specs, but about mission success rates and stability. The humanoid robot artistic performance competition focuses on innovation applications of AI plus robotics in stage shows. From the micron level precision of industrial arms to the rhythmic pulse of uh, humanoid dancers, from rescue drones piercing through thick smoke, to surgical robots stitching the fabric of life. It builds a frontier showcase platform for a robot art ecosystem. Together, we have witnessed the sparks of smart creation for the future. They are more than steel and cold. They are the very extension of human imagination. Now we will wrap up our Xinhua life now. And thank you for watching and see you next time.